before we proceed to start putting things together, let's check a couple things. First thing would be wheel bearings. Rotate them, make sure they're real smooth. There's no binding or rough action in the bearings. Then check your tie rod ends. Make sure you didn't destroy the boots, you press them out. Make sure the tie rods are, ends are good and tight. They, they don't move too freely in the bores. If all this checks out, we can proceed on with the assembly of the replacement ball joints. Before proceeding to press in the new ball joints, it would be a good idea to clean up the A-arms where the new ball joints are going to go. Clean up the interior holes as well as apply a light coat of grease. It will make the ball joints go in so much easier. A special note on your ball joints. Check the taper and make sure it's very tight in the bore. If they're not tight, they rock, then you have the wrong ball joints. Don't install them, return them, get the correct parts. Installing the incorrect parts can cause total steering failure. Make sure you apply a good coat of grease on the press shaft. It definitely will make the ball joints go in very, very easy compared to not having the shaft greased. Here's a comparison between the old ball joints and the new ball joints. You'll note that the old ball joints are extremely loose in their bores. The new ball joints are very tight. I had to use a bench vise to straighten the shaft up so it would align with the press. Obviously it came with the required parts including the Zerk. Here's the setup for pressing in the ball joint. Note the cup is now on top. The same pieces that are on top and on the bottom are as they were before. I went back and took the vise to make sure that the ball joint shaft was centered in the press. Now it's ready to go ahead and tighten it up and press it into place. Here I'm just starting the ball joint by tapping it in with a rubber mallet just to get it started. It'll make it much easier to put the press on it and begin to press it in place. I elected to go with Moog. They're definitely not the cheapest option, but they make a top quality product. And since I'm planning on keeping the car for a while, it seemed like a really good decision for me. Here I am pressing in the new ball joint. In general I made a couple turns and then a couple times I took the press completely off. Checked the ball joint to make sure it was going in squarely. Check the top, check the bottom, reinstall the press and continue. When you're pressing in the new joint it definitely pays to go slow. After every couple turns at the very least I would check and make sure it was going in square. You should definitely fill it when the ball joint seats. After that, remove the tool, physically inspect, and make sure that the ball joint is firmly seated. After the uh, ball joint has been pressed into place, you want to install the Zerk and give it a preliminary lubrication. Now 
After you get the ball joint in, the next task will be to seat the boot. I use my fingers to seat three sides. The fourth side will not go on with finger pressure. I found the best way to do that was with a medium pair of channel locks just pull down lightly on the front. Under no circumstances, try to use a hammer to push it in. If you do, you'll cut your boot. Now we're ready to mount the spindle. Note you may have to do some minor bending of uh, the brake shield to get it to go in. After the brake shield clears the A-arm, it should drop right in place. Don't forget to make sure the threads on the new ball joint are clean. A good wire brush will take care of this for you. Once the spindle is in place, you're ready to install the new castle nut. I would mainly screw it all the way down with your fingers. And remember, we're going to torque it to the lower specification and then tighten it up to hunt the next available hole to insert the carter pin through. Now it's time to torque the new ball joint nut. Moog in this case specified for 5 8 and 16 millimeter threads, 75 to 90 foot pounds. So I torqued initially to 75 foot pounds. After that, you tighten it again until you get the next hole where you can insert the carter pin through. Then insert the new carter pin and bend the carter pin into position. The new ball joint nuts are 27 millimeter. Now we're ready to install the new struts. A few words on why I chose to go with Coney shocks and struts. There are many quality manufacturers out there. I chose Coney on price, recommendation, and user reviews. Few people online who reviewed Coney were unhappy with their purchase. These were about $410 purchased off of eBay. For about 200 more, Coney sells an adjustable set of shocks and struts. Since I had no plans to race or autocross the car, the standard units seemed to fit my needs quite nicely. So far, after several weeks on the road, I couldn't be happy with my purchase. Insert the bolts and tighten the nuts to 141 to 199 foot-pounds. Tighten the engine compartment strut nut to 56 to 92 foot-pounds. Now we're ready to reinstall the tie rod. Make sure the threads are clean by first checking them with the wire brush. Then insert the tie rod and tighten the 19 millimeter up to 35 to 47 foot pounds. After that, insert and set the carter pin. Reinstall the analog braking sensor and remount the analog braking sensor bracket to the strut. Reinstall the brake caliper, and according to my Chinton's manual, it said tighten the nuts to 95 foot-pounds. To me, that seems somewhat excessive, especially since I broke a socket doing it, but they are tightened to 95 foot-pounds.
I didn't do a detail install on the rear shocks because they're actually pretty simple. In this case, you'll definitely have to remove the rear tires. The outer nut is 18 millimeter, the inner is 15. You'll have to compress the shock slightly to install it from the bottom. Jack the car up ahead of the rear tires and let the axle hang free. To tighten the upper rear shock mounts, you need to hold the central shaft with an adjustable wrench and then use your wrench to tighten the nut up as you hold the shaft from rotating. When you're reinstalling your tires, don't forget to tighten them in a star pattern. There is a torque specification for this, but I'd usually get them as tight as I can get them with the standard tire iron that comes with a car. I usually go around them at least twice and sometimes three times to make sure they're all uniformly tight and they don't move. That wraps it up. Hope you enjoyed following along. See you on the next video. Have a great day.